feel the depression I don't later. care if you I don't care if you sees him or not. Everybody give this a big old thumbs down for me. Turn, turn off the recording. <laughs> I won't use it. <laughs> I won't use it. Mick, I'll tell you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome to Made a Zuby with you, America's favorite TCG podcast. One person <clears throat> has his life savings and goblins. The other is leaving us forever. We are joined by Louis de George. <laughs> That's the Goblin Master. Okay, he's this too busy. Your being best stupid. Intro. And Mitchell Murray in his farewell tour. Yes, this, this, is, right into the, this is it. Oh gosh, I no. forgot when there's three of us, all we do is talk over each other. It's all it's all it's, of a sudden. Yeah. Y'all we're doing not great. Synced up anymore. Okay, yeah. so we have a very special one year episode, one Happy year anniversary. Birthday. Should we say we did it? Yep. We he, did so, it. Oh, and also it's Louis' anniversary tonight, and instead of celebrating with his wife, he's celebrating with us <laughs> for our birthday. <laughs> my wife it's my daughter's working, birthday tomorrow. <laughs> my wife is working a twelve hour shift after three hours of teaching. So she's working fifteen hours today. <clears throat> what a trooper, man. Yeah. Happy anniversary. My to wife's my yeah, doctor. My wife Congrats. Is, my wife's going hard. She's killing her right now. Louis's wife is also my doctor, for those of you who don't know. That's he's a great true. doctor. He has prescribed me <laughs> nothing but incredible advice. <laughs> did she talk to you about your long COVID? She did. Oh, where's you- the tally? Mitch mentioned COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got to bring it at least twice more in this conversation. So she, she cured me. So Sorry. She I, cured you. Telling me I had it. So, uh, so we have a special episode. We're going to talk about all the 85 games <laughs> Louis wants us to cover. All the games he covers, right? Yeah, the games that no one of you have ever heard of. But importantly for all you, we're doing it in a stupid order because Louis wants to do them in a stupid order. So we're going to start off with Fab like normal. Then we're going right into the zoo. Then we're covering Pokemon, Magic, then a bunch of games nobody cares about, and then Genesis. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Excellent. Most excellent. Um, Yeah. It's going to be great. This is going to be good. I'm actually super excited for this. Hey, I want to say something. Okay. I want to start off by saying thank you to all the people who have been watching us for a year. That's, um, George, don't, you can't not be sincere. George, you can't, you can't carry a podcast. Nobody watches. To to those of you who, who watch and listen and who have been with us since the stream of death. We're trying to be so sincere here. The monarch stream. The the monarch stream where we saw (laughs) Louis' soul exit his body. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe the since. podcast is the curse of the market. Have you thought about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure some other people agree with that. To uh, to those of you who have been with us since the beginning, uh, thank you so much for watching the episodes. To those of you who hopped on last week, also, you know, thank you where, for being. Where here. you been? <laughs> where you been? What, uh, what like, have you been doing with your time that's more important than listening to me? This has been uh, this has been I a mean, wild ride for uh, for all of us, and it's fun. Like I think. Yeah. I think this has been a wild ride for the three of us, but it's it's um, characterized the wild ride that the TCG industry has been over the last year. So it's kind of fun to have mm-hmm. this on the history books. And uh, I just want to say thank you to those of you who watch. And also, make sure you hit the subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> but Louie, where can they find this podcast? YouTube, <laughs> Spotify, and Apple, Apple Podcasts. And- Made the Zuby with you.com. We have new Man, you've gotten way worse at that. Featuring George. Yeah, it's just like, it's, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. only ever, Everybody only watches on YouTube. Nobody watches on the other streams. But That's hey. not true. We have, we have 250 uh, weekly listens on podcasts. Is that true? Oh, okay. That's true. Yeah. It's like, it has doubled in the last like three months. That's because I'm right. ugly. That's the bald. The balding has happened. They're like, get this. The, the shine is coming off my head. They're like, get me out of here. Yeah, it's pretty I'm great. beautiful. You Body are positivity. Yeah, if you yeah on, the inside, on certain days you're beautiful. Um, I so today days. for the first time like in a week, it felt amazing. Mitch, you want to give us your uh, your your Mitch five minutes of Mitch? I don't even know if I need that. Not ma- much. Five minutes of Mitch. What? <laughs> All right, start the timer, uh, Louie. I'm with you. All right, so I've been seeing occasional comments. I do read the comments, even though I've not been here, um, and I've I've missed being on the podcast. But life is yeah. What, what yeah. you read the comments and I don't. Yeah, Why I read them read just the to feel a whole. Like, I read the comments because because there are comments saying we miss Mitch. Where's Mitch? And it makes me feel whole again inside. Um, but yeah, it. it 
being a little facetious there, but uh, I have genuinely enjoyed this TCG community and enjoyed hanging out with you, you bozos. Um, but life has just been insanely busy for me. Uh, my real job, uh, which two of these guys don't have, uh, has picked up traction a lot. I'm being sarcastic. You know, Louis. I know you I'm work a off. I am but- unemployed. <laughs> That's not true. You're a goblin trader. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking about. All right. Wait, hold on. We're going to put the NFT up on wait, your face, yeah. right? No, we're not talking about NFTs. This is not an NFT podcast. It's Nobody not an wants NFT to moment. Hear it. Nobody wants to hear about it. But Louis they don't want to know how NFTs. You free money. <laughs> <laughs> your path to financial freedom starts with goblins. Who would have thought it? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Life has gotten the end of me, uh, and you have to make sacrifices for family and work and all those other things. And unfortunately, this one. So let me ask you this, Mick: Is it fair to say that like Louis just cares more than since he's here on his anniversary versus spending time with his loved ones? Uh, that's a great question. I'll let, I'll leave that one up for Louis for okay. reflection. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that one in the ether. That's fine. Uh, you, you know, who knows? Maybe this one go long enough that uh, Louis has another mental breakdown on stream. We'll see. God, I hope so. <laughs> That'd be the I best. I have to say, the biggest, the biggest, like the best thing about that stream is that YouTube for live streams cuts off after like what the ten hour mark. Yeah, nobody Thank can God. ever see the end of that, and Thank nobody God. can see the ending of that. And that is the best saving grace because I'm pretty sure Louis would have a thousand to two thousand less subscribers if they saw his mental breakdown on stream. That was so, rough. That was that was rough. That was rough. I guess we I also say, went, I think we didn't pace ourselves. Yeah, we did. We we also didn't we didn't treat that like a marathon. We treated it like a, a sprint. And by well, halfway through, I was like, "There's no way I'm going to last this entire uh, thing." It just felt like there was so much pressure. We raised like <laughs> forty thousand dollars. We raised a ton of money. <laughs> we were like, we were really there was a lot of pressure. Uh, I that was like <clears> right. <throat> had the flood happened yet? I can't remember where we were on the flood <laughs> side of it. My that was, life that was, has been a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a blur. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I, I love you guys. I love this podcast. I love the community that uh, we've built around it. And uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all having me on this whole time. And I feel like there's a nice balance that we had. And uh, that was ruined. It was ruined. Y'all, you know, y'all just have to find a new third person, new third wheel. So do, do not say that. Everybody messages me all the time. Yeah. All that's oh, all people, the messages they get. We are not people, taking out people want to take my slot. We are not everybody, taking out everybody the wants to. We could have people, a revolving people, Mick. The, oh, hey, there you go. I no. mean, just you could replace the M with no. another letter not, and it'd be really they're funny. They're not ready for this. All right. They're not ready. That's, we are, we that's are potentially not taking true. applications. No. no. You're so cocky we, now. We you don't got, care like, how you've let it go to your head. Unless it's you, Kanye. Kanye, you can take it you want, baby. Kanye or Logan Paul, welcome on the podcast. That's it. Time. That's it. If your name is Mitch Murray, <laughs> Kanye, or Logan Paul, you are always welcome on the podcast. Everybody Logan. else dead. Oh, oh, or Magic Historian. Or Magic Historian. Or Rudy on. Yeah. What about the professor? No. Rudy can, Rudy can be on here. The Rudy can come on. Probably not. Probably not. We'd, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't we drive the professor. with the professor. I know he's your best friend. I know he's your best friend, Louie. But like, I. <laughs> he's gotten me the most views on my channel. So I but like. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we would jive a lot more with the magic historian. Yeah, I, I, based on what I've seen in his engagements, I would completely agree. Um, so. Yeah, I take well, Rudy. Guys, I take Rudy. I'm gonna miss you. I really am. I mean, we'll I mean, talk. We, we'll have our group yeah, chat. Like, yeah, I'll never. When George been, finally you're not, responds, you're not dying. <laughs> Mitch like, and us are still friends. We we're all George. Still friends. George is just responding when he has time for us plubs. Yeah. That's been a week. <laughs> All right, George. Yeah. I resp- yeah, we won't get into it. But it's been like three weeks. <laughs> All right, it's summertime, man. This Our is awkward. Are I mean, this is awkard, it man. is really this awkward. My, my right. chat thread with George is just me sending messages about watches and George not responding. <laughs> I wore this watch for you today. It's my Thailand exclusive. Mitch, I will also turtle. not. I will also not respond to you if you actually if you send me a watch of your. If you send me a picture of your watch, I'll send you a picture of my goblin. So, what's your, what's your goblin? 
<laughs> all right, I'll trade you. I'll trade you picks. Let's continue. This is getting <laughs> weird. All right, here we go. Flesh and blood. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. Let's go into flesh and do, blood. Do you want to go over what the how what we're going to be discussing for every yes, game? Or? We what are that. we reviewing for not. each one? We did not review it. We did not. I love, better content. I love that it's just two. Three people doesn't work for a podcast. Um, <laughs> get out, Mick. You heard no. him. Get out. I'll be out, I'll be out after this episode and let y'all get, get out, back Mick, to it. Heard him. It's not any <clears> one <throat> person. It's just the idea of three people. All right. Uh, oh, no, this. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where we thought the game would be at this point. I'm going to get my refill of coffee while you do this. No, George, you can't leave. <gasps> We're, everyone we're gonna talk <laughs> the problem is george also doesn't know what we're talking about because he doesn't pay attention uh we're gonna talk about like the last year where we expected the game to be and then what's different about it now and then we're gonna talk about where we <clears> think <throat> it's gonna be in a year uh kind of yep. like looking back on the past and then predicting the future and and just hopping around uh, and we're gonna talk about flesh and blood metazoo pokemon magic we're gonna talk about all the new TCG. yeah it's gonna be great we're gonna make today great is what we're gonna do all right welcome back george so this time last year where did we all think flesh and blood was going to be in one year got it you went past my bedtime you gotta get the coffee refill what did i miss what are we doing where, where did we oh all my god we where did we all think flesh <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Hold on, you talk to them about what we're doing. I'm gonna go get my coffee, and when you come back, I want you to tell me what we're doing. All right. <laughs> Where did we all think Flesh and Blood was gonna be? A not year just ago? Monarch. I know what you all are thinking. <laughs> not just Monarch. George, how much uh, do you think Monarch was gonna be worth? You two both thought Monarch was gonna be worth more than Crucible of War, which is fairness, by the end of the I, that way. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, uh, one now. is trending up. Let's one is it. trending down. You guys want to do another bet? No. No, 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 we don't have I any more money. James White bought the printer before he did Monarch. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled the Pokemon on me. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. Just owns the printer. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, who, who wants to start? Go ahead, Mick. I mean, I'll go because my yeah. perspective, I think, is completely different at this point. Um, I'm actually super jazzed about Uprising. I mean, it seems like it's going to be a solid set. Um, and just, I don't know. Like, I just feel like there's a looking, I'm not a part of like, I don't talk with Louie and George on a daily basis like I used to or weekly basis. And Joe, just from the outside looking in and just for somebody who's just excited about it, I'm I'm personally excited. Um, from a player standpoint, though, I'm not really sure how the community is growing or this that, and the other. So just my gut feeling is I actually think that it's trending upward. Um, I'm thinking a future thing. Let me come back around. Uh, where did we think it was going to be this time last year? I mean, what we thought mid last year, I think we we're starting to doubt things, right? We were like, oh, there's some things that need to be fixed. Right. A year ago so, was monarch release. But hey, so very importantly, this a year ago is when everybody was telling was it, me the market's oh, only dipping right. because it's winter or summer or some other right. season. Right. And some markets always dip during whatever season we were heading into. But this was like, this was not the exact date. Monarch was like three weeks before this, right? Yeah, it was like a month after Monarch. So this yeah. is right when Monarch like hit like that little <laughs> hiccup, if you will. A little hiccup. And we're like, <laughs> because I did exceptionally well in those it's first three weeks of singles. It's the best yeah. time to buy. And we're like, oh, it's dipping. And you know what I did? I did buy more. <laughs> I did buy more. I'm still holding on to an Arknight shard that I bought at the peak of the market because I thought it was going. dipping. Uh, I've lost lots of money on that one, but <laughs> besides the point, I, I, I think we just thought I, we saw a huge upside. We were extremely excited, both from a, I, from me, from a business investment opportunity. Like I was excited and in investing in a lot of different cards at that point in time. Yeah. Um, I went all in, um, this time last year. Did cool. Yeah. I, I think I, a year ago, <clears throat> thought that flesh and blood was going to look a little bit more like a mainstream TCG yeah. at this point That's a really good in, a, in a year. Like I, I think um, everything from 
I think Flesh and Blood's in a in a really good spot right now. Like I think that Flesh and Blood has recovered in a in a pretty significant well way. The market has pretty much um plat you know uh, what's the bottom it's plateau? leveled out like yeah. leveled out yeah like like it's not it has kind of hit an equilibrium at least right and then i think i think things are fine right now but i i was so i quit i quit my job about a year ago like, yes. I, yeah. like i i it actually I, was it was right around this time was, this is about the year anniversary of <clears> quitting my job because I was going to be a flesh and blood YouTube channel. Do you think I, it would take you back? Huh? Do you think your job would take you back? Just asking for a friend. Uh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, they would, but I'm, I don't need to go back. I'm not going to go back. Uh, I have two wonderful kids. I get to go to the park with during the day. It's great. Anyway. Um, I, when I quit my job, the idea was like flesh and blood's going to continue to grow in the way that it's growing. And my, at the time, what three or four thousand subscribers is going to be fifteen to twenty thousand subscribers, thirty thousand subscribers, and by the end of the year, the the, the other YouTube channels like you know DM Armada, Red Zone Rogue are going to be thirty thousand subscribers, and the the market of Flesh and Blood was going to expand so much and that just it just didn't it did not work that way. It didn't happen like that. What? No, fine. Go ahead. So. Uh, for me, like the the size of the game is certainly smaller than I thought it was going to be, um, and then the the communication too is is less um, less than I thought it was going to be. I'll just leave it at that. Like I, I thought there was going to be more. I th- you know, we talked about like the, they've got to be looking to hire a U.S. representative soon. Right. Like we talked about that like a year ago. Like that side of things is different. But I will say, like I think the game has had this crazy roller coaster and is in a better spot today than it was three months ago or six months ago. And, and so now looking forward, it's okay. How, what does a number four or five TCG look like? And I think that has also changed a lot for me. Like I, at, at some point I was like, no, there can be a, the top three can be a top four and they can all be really big. But like as I've learned more about Pokemon, as I've learned more about Yu-Gi-Oh, I already knew a lot about Magic. Those are already. You, so, you mean like, George was right? Always. I will never say that. <laughs> Always. <laughs> George, I, I'm just going to translate it for you. He's saying that you were right when you said that there can only be so many TCGs in a store. You know what did it for me was was Collecticon walking around and not seeing. Yeah, seeing, I remember I was walking around with you and you were like, in, you were stunned by this. I was bad because no my vibe. world, my store, you walk into my store and there are, uh, there are six giant, no, there's five, five giant flesh and blood banners. Like flesh and sure. blood is a flagship element to my store. And none of the other stores even had a box that were right. there. Like they, did, they didn't get better other stores. Got your back, yeah, Louie. Like there was like two out of the 150, 300 stores that were there were even that, that was, that was a shock to me. Like that was a, um, I remember walking around and being surprised that you were that shocked. I was amazed. Yeah. Because that's my world. Every contact I have has come from the flesh and blood scene. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, and it was yeah. actually growing quite rapidly here. There are multiple stores in the Tulsa area that actually house it now. It's not a flagship you know, product for them, but they support it like they do Digimon or, you know, Force of Wheel or other games as well. Yeah. So, which to your point is, it's not a top three or four. It might be a top five, six. Top 10 for sure. Um, all right. I'll be more brutal, I guess. That's my role in this podcast. I know. I'll, that is, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I guess, I guess. No, you're, 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 no, you're, you're soft. Really gentle. Soft. I mean, like, listen, I think, I, th- I think it's, I think it's only fair to say it's been a rough year. Um, oh, for sure. Like, the mar- like that. But you, you know, you're soft. So like, I like the market's <laughs> one thing. I'm not gonna talk about the market. The market is what the market is. That's not how I gauge it. Like they've had, a, they've had a lot of bannings. They've had a lot of balance issues. Never thought that would happen. You're right. Never, <laughs> ever, 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 yeah. ever, ever. Ever did I I'm, think that they would be yeah. banning this number of cards or have this number of balance? Right. Never fair. ever did I think that. Yeah. Now, looking forward, they seem to have solved the balance issues right now. 
Well, they fix their mistakes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry. That's, yep. that's what he's saying. Yeah. Thank, thank you for em- thank you for emphasizing. I okay. appreciate that. You're you're doing great. Yeah. I'm here for your um, color commentary. You're, you're doing great. Um, and um, listen, like, and I've I've always said this: if the game has a smooth six months, nobody will care about what happened a year ago. Yeah. All this nonsense with Channel Fireball and all these other direct partners doing all types of games, the balance issues. None of that will matter if we look back in six months and say Uprising was amazing, the game is balanced, and we're back. Nobody will be like, oh, my God, remember when they had a nerf chain? Nobody will care. Nobody will care. Like, that is the benefit of these new TCGs is that the community is ravenous, which means they forgive a lot quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, um, this is not where I thought Fab was going to be. A year ago, I don't think it's a. I don't think for anybody who mm-hmm. was in this community a year ago thought that would be a year ago. No, um, like not if you're honest with yourself. If you're a liar, then yeah, of course you say yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we had a career. Uh, you know, those are guys that are saying like, oh, I said the game was dead. Yeah, and they, they, and that's my point, right? Because the game's not dead, right? Yeah. Like the game's like they just had twelve hundred people in New Jersey. In New Jersey, I know, Mitch. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that to you. <laughs> Hey, it's fine. My my feelings are not hurt. I was in New York City last weekend. Oh, did, great. You bar- did you have to borrow pizza? Everybody uh, in New, New York City just got angry at you. Yeah, that's true. Why? It's okay that you diss New Jersey. I was in New York City. It's the same thing. No, I'm not. I'm not saying they're the same thing. I'm saying New York City is better than Jersey. Oh, okay. My favorite New York slice is Sabaro. Did you have some? You can get Sabaro anywhere. Why would I go get <laughs> wow. it in New York City? Wow! Wow! Everybody who watches the office leave Mitch a hateful comment in this comment I had section. some Ivan ramen, some Korean barbecues, some delicious sushi. Oh my gosh. All right. Back to flesh and blood, George. Where do you think it's going to be in a year? I, uh, here's what I don't know that. I don't know that. Here's no. what I do know. It's not a, where do you know it's going to be in the year? It's a, where do you think it's going to be in the year? Well, there's two paths that I'm hearing you say, George, if they're yeah. successful in the next I mean, six like, months, what's going to happen? Me, tell me if uprising is balanced. And I will tell you if we're back. Yeah. Because that's been the only issue that I think is um, really holding it back. Um, Because, like, listen, like, I, you know, it's funny. I talked to somebody else who does um, quality control for a fab competitor. I won't say which one. DM me if you want to know. And he <laughs> said to me, like, the most interesting thing is everybody he talks to about Fab, they all universally say it's the best game they've ever played. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it's wild. He's like, I've never heard that so unanimously. Yeah. And, like, listen, like, that means you can get away with a lot of problems if you're the best game anybody's ever played. Yeah. Yeah. Like that means like a year of bad balance won't matter if you have a year of good balance. Right. Because you're a better game. Yep. So if uprising is balanced, I don't think this past year is gonna matter. I, well, and I think and you're now, leaving out some go ahead. Now that Louis. they're doing slower set releases and not like uprising being balanced will get you four months. You know I mean like uprising being great, like it will get you four months before there's another product out. Yeah, I mean I, like go ahead, Nick. I, I say I think there's another thing that that is not being mentioned here outside of just the gameplay. Flesh and Blood has the most phenomenal artwork I've seen in a modern TCG. That's just my personal opinion, but I, I was immediately sucked in with just the their their cards, the card art, the card finishing, so the cold foiling. Like they are setting the industry standard for what I think, and and they're developing this really elaborate lore. Like the way in which they're executing on other pieces are a step above of some of the rest. Yeah, um, I don't. Let me that, this is just my bit. personal design. Yeah. Like coming from yeah. a design background, I think there is more influence. When I first opened the cards and I looked at it, like that's what drew me in. Then I'm reading the cards. Then I'm playing the game, right? But like that's the that's one of the hooks. And then you yeah. play the game, and you're like, to your point, this is one of the best games I've ever played. Like I very like intimately remember my first time playing a WTR like set or one of those starter decks. I was like, this is different than anything I've played from a TCG standpoint. 
I remember the first time I played Welcome to Wraith, and I was like, oh, this is brilliant. And like, yeah. it takes a lot for me to be like, oh, this is like brilliant. Sure. Like, it's not, it's, you know, it's not a better magic. It's a better no, game. No, it's, it's a, just a good game. Yeah, it's, it's a great know. game. Well, yeah. We, this is, continue, George. Where are you, where, where do you think it's going to be? I think, I think they're going to figure it out. I, I'll be, you know, and that'll be wild because we'll get, you know, I won't, people will start to like me again, uh, which I won't like. So I got to figure out something else to do with my time because I'm not going to be on this podcast if people like it. Um, <laughs> I, I I know me. Um, <laughs> That'd be great. I, Getting rid of George is it would be the goal. Wait, so we'll know. just have Louie talking by himself. That. I can't say that and actually, <clears throat> and actually. I was gonna say just Louis talking on a podcast by himself is Louis's channel. Yes, yeah. him talking to Whale Dale, his imaginary friend. Um, so <laughs> gosh, you are on fire today. All right, are we done talking about them? No, I think they're gonna figure it out. Um. I hope they're going to figure it out. I think they will. I feels, think it they feels will. like they're just, they're heading like, in a positive direction. Like here is the good news. Like Bravo was so obviously busted. I think it showed them that there's a problem. And I think it's a problem that they can fix. Just ship it. Well, okay, 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 Fudmaster Flex. That's what he uh, said. Oh, what, James all right, Fudmaster Flex. Oh, you're calling right, James Fudmaster White Flex. the Fudmaster Flex now? I, I, I think they're gonna fix it. And like, listen, like if if Uprising is not balanced, we have a real problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Uprising I think is everyone's there. Everyone. So if there's like, another Bravo and Uprising, and I, I'm saying that just figuratively, it, it's yeah. it's gonna be increased a ton of doubt. Yeah. I think they're gonna figure it out. Um, hot take. I hope they do. I hope they hot do. Take. It's the hot best take. game. Hot take. Are you gonna fud it, King of Fed? A lot of the community blames the economic downturn of Flesh and Blood on the print run. Hot take. It has more to do with the the band gameplay. gameplay and the restrictions. Yeah, of course. I, I because if there's more trust in the game, there would have been more people to suck up that product. That's just my. I mean, we can. Uh, this could be a whole episode, but that that's. We, let's give, save that for another time. But I think there's a, a little bit of that to flush out for, in the flesh and blood. All right, continuing. We gotta keep moving. We're thirty minutes in. Yeah, we, we got way too much time. Lots of things to talk about. Meta Zoo. Do do do. The power is real. That's the Meta Zoo theme song, everyone. I know. Uh, Thank you. you. You need to do that again. No. My, my daughter. My, my daughter sings that every time she sees a Meta Zoo pack, which is like. All day. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, I'll start this one out. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I, uh, I think that Me- I MetaZoo has certainly grown further than I thought it would have been a year ago. Uh, I think we all would agree with that. I, I, I George. <laughs> Oh, would we? For, for George, I'm sure it hasn't grown enough. George is like, oh, I, I knew, I knew oh, it would be this we? big. You would all agree with that, would we? Hmm. Wait, oh, well, wait, well, George. You thought it was, from here a minute. Did you think it was going to be bigger? Listen, like oh, right, I'll go first because you all duds. No, <laughs> <I'm so laughs> the third episode when Mike announced the partnerships, I remember forcing my will. That's when the first time I did the intro because they refused I, to do the intro. The title of the podcast was "This is not a MetaZoo podcast or some nonsense." Because they were like. This is not, we have to talk about these other things first. And I said, like, listen, if this is true, MetaZoo's going to have an amazing year. Yeah. And they did. I remember you saying that. And they did. I think, like, listen, I think, uh, you know, they have grown insanely for a year. Come on, they're a year younger than Fab. They're two years younger than Fab almost. Like, they've grown at a rapid pace. I think we're seeing some of those growth pains now. Um, you know, I think that we're seeing some of that. Um, but like, uh, you know, listen, like what they've done is, I mean, like it's it, it, it's truly remarkable. Yeah. Um, you know, I. Um, it exceeded my expectations. I know y'all didn't believe like I did. That's all right. Like well, I love my it, heart. It, it's not that we didn't believe like you did, but it's not that it, it has more to do with looking at fab, looking at other existing TCGs. It was just like, I don't know. You're both wrong. This, 
this coffee cup is a crystal ball. That's all I'm gonna tell you, boys. You're both wrong. Both of you guys were th- withheld and didn't say that Cryptid Nation One was gonna be worth more than Monarch First Edition at this time. That is not but true. That, and is, that is, true. is not true that at is all. True. And you have been you have been you have been fact checked on this several times. Have you have been fact checked on I this said, several times, said, and that is a was, lie. That is a lie. It was, it was that episode in which we all right. Heard- uh, I believe it was Cody who found it for us before. Cody. Please find it for the third time for Louie so you can correct him for the third Let time. Me finish it. It was in that mm-hmm. episode that you guys said that Monarch was going to be worth more than Crew. And it was in that episode no. that you just. That was okay. That is wrong. You're wrong. That was, hey, that was on the stream. Hey, boo boos. That was on the stream. Hey, we can fact check this. It's fine. No. But I said. I do remember you. I do remember Louie betting and us not taking the bet. No, yes, you didn't Cody. Say no. Cody, you didn't look, say no. Cody, fact check this. Finish. You didn't say no, but you both stuttered. You both delayed. I was all in on it, and you both delayed. Okay, neither here nor there. Metazoo is obviously bigger than most people thought that it was going to be, other yeah. than George and Mike. That's pro- that's probably it. That's, that's probably that's it. Actually, <laughs> George, Mike, Steve Aoki didn't know Maybe about King it back Pokemon. Then. Uh, I don't. Did he know about it back then? I don't know. It was Team Pokemon was on an early. I thought. Who knows? So, but okay, King Pokemon. What I want from what I want from Metazoo this next year. No, that's not. It's where do you think it's going to be in this next year? Oh, um. <laughs> It, it also, you didn't answer the question. What was different from this last year? Like, what? what? I, know, I guess you did answer the first question. No, George is saying like he expected yeah. it to be where it's at today. Yeah, I called it, nailed it. I don't, um, I don't think I expected there to be as many things as they had. Yeah, that's fair. Like, neither did I. That's fair. TV shows, like, oh, I thought you meant like the eighteen boxes. You mean the well, 18 different products for yeah. all the product. different product lines. I mean, like there are so many different verticals. I mean, I, I knew we, that. I thought we'd have they, NFTs. They they said that they were going to be in. Well, yeah, they had NFTs on top of that. They said they were going to be in big box stores. They got in big box sport, stores. Like, it's one thing to say like, "Hey, we're coming to big box stores," and then they they did it. Yeah, like I had the faith. So I don't know. Like, there's a lot of growth that happened in the last year for MetaZoo that far exceeded my expectations. I expected a lot of growth. I don't think I expected it to the scale in which they did it. Where do you think it's going to be in a year, George? I think UFO will be a very smooth release. I think I think they will figure out the distribution issues. I hope so. I yeah. I think that Mike's map and MSRP will work, and the boxes will not be sold below 120. Cool. I think that the player scene continues to grow. Uh, I think they figure out the balance issues with water. I don't think we see the TV show this year. That's what I was wondering. Actually, I'm really looking forward to the TV show. Okay. Uh, where, where, where do you think it's going to be? I'll go next because yours is such a dud. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's a dud to the uh, king of fud. I, I think MetaZoo is certainly bigger than I thought it was going to be at this point this year. I think bigger in a much different way. Uh, yeah. it, it is the, the, um, I, I think now Mike is starting to see, I mean, we've, we had a very good, uh, we, you know, we had, we did our podcast last week and, you know, there was a reaction to that, that, uh, you know, Mike made the LGS kit now free um i he also took it down and it's now it wasn't available for the the extra days that it was supposed to be available for so uh, there's that side of it too um but i think uh the game the ip is bigger than even i thought it was gonna be and i even said like this is different than flesh and blood this is different than magic this is different this is more like pokemon it's an ip it's all about the brand you know everyone was complaining they have shirts before they have cards and i was like that's the point it's a brand um i think that is bigger than even when i where i thought it was going to be i think the local game store scene of it is much smaller than i thought it was going to be Um, that's fair that's fair yeah like i I would agree with that and i think that the uh 
I think that I think I I believe that Mike has started to see that in the last three months uh, with the. But we're on set. We're going on to what set four, and now we're just getting organized play kits. I think I thought that that would come earlier and in a different type of release than than this one was. Obviously, you guys heard us speak our piece about the thousand dollar thing. I still don't like that look. Um, still, I I, th- I still think it shouldn't have included product, and it should have just been prize support um i i guess if it's going to be for onboarding and maybe there was a slight not full understanding of what that product was uh, like i think that for the stores there should have been a option for free prize support like that um but that being said like i think that mike gets that and i think that he is going to understand how important the local game store is for any successful tcg even pokemon like Pokemon could just be a direct to consumer thing, but they, they, they're not, they go through distribution systems and, you know, just because magic, the gathering is circumnavigating that with Amazon and stuff doesn't mean that that, huh? We'll talk about magic in a minute. Go ahead. But like, I think for me, it's, uh, in the next year, I, I think that Mike sees that. I think that he leans into that over, the idea of just raw gross prod profit and, you know right i hope we start seeing some of those extra products that george was talking about where it's the the profit margins much higher and the uh the the overheads much lower i mean the overhead on booster boxes of any game is very significantly high it's expensive for stores to hold booster boxes um if you get stuck with 20 to 30 percent of the booster boxes you order you don't make a profit because the profit margins are, are so low. So I think that kind of thing I would like to see move in that direction. Um, so, yeah. Size yeah. wise, I don't know, like it had massive, massive growth. And I, I think in order for this to see significant growth, you have, George, I, you have to see the video game and you have to see the movie in this next year. Next year. Uh, that, I don't Not think that's movie, how it works uh, TV show. I, I just think if you're going, there is so much, the exact same thing that we said between Fab and MetaZoo, the competition being, there is every bit as much competition now yeah. as there was then increased. And so I there's Metazoo, more competition now. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what he's saying. It's, it's kind of, yeah. MetaZoo, Fab and MetaZoo paved the way. Fab first, MetaZoo kind of came in afterwards. They, they paved the way. did different way, but yeah, right. They paved the, the, the scope of what this can look like for new TCGs. They painted a picture. And now it's the competition is massive and the competition is also incredibly um, agile and, uh, and talented. There are some, there are some talented people creating stuff. And um, I, I think the pressure's on and, and I think Mike sees that. So, yeah. Mitch. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm over here looking at my stack of MetaZoo cards and I don't know, like they're still just as charming today as they were the day that I got them or the day that I opened them. Um, my wife says about me. Yeah. It's shocking actually. And the um, lie. don't want to lie. More importantly, <laughs> don't, I don't want to think about your wife opening. You. So <laughs> TMI, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I think looking at the next year, so my, my just perspective on TCGs has just changed drastically. Um, it went from opportunity costs to now, like, do I enjoy playing this? Is this something that I'm going to have in my collection? Um, which is just a vastly different perspective. Um, I genuinely still enjoy collecting Pokemon or not Pokemon, uh, MetaZoo. I was going to say, it reminds me of collecting Pokemon as a child. Like just that joy that it brings having your binder full of all your hollows. Um, it actually makes you wonder, depending on the marketing strategy, like, are there going to be kids who hop on this bandwagon and are trading cards on the playground when they're older? I don't know. Like I I'm genuinely curious to see kind of where things go. Um, I do think there's this looking into the next year for any of these TCGs just feels very odd. Um, mainly just because of the amount of uncertainty right now. <laughs> so yes. it's just hard. Yes. It does. Like I just feel like the world is just, you know, on a, like a little, you know, we're just like on the fulcrum and it's like, does it tilt Listen. this way or that way? I think we all know what we need. We need some stimmies. That will get this market back up again. (laughs) 
Hmm. But I think Stimmy's are part of the reason we're here. If Joe Biden is listening to this, first, make guest keeper. Second, giving them stimmies. <laughs> Somebody, so, you know what? Don't even give me the stimmies. I get a stimmy last time. Give a stimmy to the people. I, I just again. think I, I'm just I, yeah, I, I'm just excited to, I guess, see. Mike has surprised me all of last year, and 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 their team has surprised me what they've executed on. I actually thought Wilderness was a phenomenal product. I mean, I felt like the execution of it was well well done. And it gets me excited for the UFO set. I mean, we all know that Louie is hyped up for it. UFO. So, dude's only been waiting, you know, since the infancy for UFO to come around. So uh, I, I'm i genuinely curious. I, I'm just excited and I'm curious to see how the brand will continue to grow. I don't think, I do think that we're starting to see the impacts of Stimmy money on on collectibles. Everything, yep. Yeah, and, and now we have the impact of inflation. So... I think it'll be interesting to see this for all collectibles. And I think I'm going to have the kind of the same tone. People are only going to choose what they absolutely love from here on out for the next year, at least. Right. Because budgets are tight. Not all of us have all the money of, of uh, right. a whale. You convinced me. I'm all in on legions. Thank you, Mick. <laughs> you, you nailed it. Okay. I do that's, have some legions behind me. No, so you know. I can send some your way. No, you know, that's I'm all about, in on legions. <laughs> we'll get to legions when we get there. Magic the gathering is next. No, no. I want legions now. All right, we'll go with Legions. Let's go with Legions. George. Louie, where did you think it would be a year uh, ago before it started? Well, we were supposed to start with the ones that we knew about a year ago. We didn't know about Legions a year ago, so it's a little hard. Uh, where will you see in the future? Listen, I think I <laughs> since meeting Legions and since getting to know Legions, uh, I have fallen more and more in love with the game, and it's awesome. It's a really, really good game. It is more complicated now that I've seen Cody play it. Uh, Co- <laughs> I mean, Cody's a big brain, right? Because I uh, played against Cody and Fab. Yeah, Cody Co- ruined me. There, there's a group of like I don't know five, <laughs> probably five to ten kitchen table <clears throat> TCG patrons who like go hard with Legions, and uh, they are. It's crazy. Like I play a game and I'm like, oh, this is super fun. It's really enjoyable, and then. <laughs> Cody plays the game and he's Cody like, just beats you to a pulp. Here's a, here's a 30 minute turn. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I, so uh, it's definitely, certainly a, a little bit more um, uh, complicated than, you know, I, I'm good at, but it's more intricate. Uh, it, but it's super good and it's super fun. And I think uh, they have a new set coming out. Uh, the set is uh, more expensive than I thought it would be based on the, uh, the next box. I've got it for pre-order, but it's like 18 Oh, packs. I was about to ask you, where can I buy Legions, Louie? My <laughs> local OGS doesn't carry it. Where can I buy Legions? <laughs> You've been asked to carry it multiple times. Yeah, You're like I, I don't carry it yet, but I want a box, Louie. Where yeah. can I purchase this you amazing product? You, we saw my Louie Louie bundle at CapDanesMarket.com. Yeah. Anyway, uh, mm-hmm. I think that the... Wait, are you going to get another alt art? Let me... Can I just... No, my card is in the next set. It's part of the next set. It's in the booster box. Can I finish? I think that the key what? to a game like Legions, <laughs> I think the key. <laughs> what? Louis, is that like I a dream come true? Can I have the yeah. exact same look? It's is that awesome. a dream come true? Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> How cool is it? You can say you're in a like you need to keep one of those sealed for the rest of your life. <laughs> People can open me in a booster pack. It's awesome. I've never wanted anything more in my life. Oh, I don't know how, why I got Louis, so hey. offended. No, 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 no. This is a general, like, listen. genuinely, just, I'm just, I'm saying this genuinely. Congrats. Thanks. I'm not you, being a smart ass. Congrats. Uh, congratulations. I will Louis. never, I will never end up, I mean, I will never end up in a TCG. It's just not something that I am. Let me, let me ask you the hard question here, Louie. Do you think they'll put your goblin in the next set? Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Rudy, you may be able to get a promo Rudy card, but Rudy's not in any booster packs. Oh, calling out Rudy on the anniversary. <laughs> Rudy, wow. Louis going to the views today, son. Louis going, going for to the them throat. views today. <laughs> I'm just you joking. Want to, obviously you want, joking. You uh, want to get your video to 5,000 so, views? You just mentioned somebody versus Rudy. Boom. The viewers so here, flood in. Here is going to always be the challenge for a new TCG like we did. <sighs> is how do you lower the cost of entry for a new player to start? Uh, I did not predict, I did not think that the next booster box would be an increase in price. I thought it'd be more similar to what you know they already had. 
there was an increase in price. I hope that they continue to make the first booster box. So after end of a year, the first edition goes out of print and they have a, another year of the unlimited version, which is different. Uh, I hope that they, <laughs> why? They're doing it differently what? though, George. Yeah. Yeah. So the first box is, is in print for a year. And then after the year, they will have this, the, that box will be in print for another year in a different version. So you can still order it. Um, so I hope that they do that and continue to have like the, a cheaper option for somebody to hop into the game. I think that's super important. Just a quick update here. After recording this episode, Taylor actually did tell me that the box price has been reduced considerably uh, back very much closer to the average box price. So really cool. Uh, I'll leave the dialogue of this in the video just so you can hear our kind of pros and cons of stuff, but the box price has been lowered. And so I think that's important just to know because it's no longer an accurate criticism of the game that we were just talking about. Um, but they're adding like a really big chase foil. They're adding some really cool stuff. It's it's going to be a really cool set. And the community is growing. The Discord server is still growing. And so for me, like I, I say the same thing about all these games. The key is that they don't grow too fast. Okay. The key, what? The, the, key but... is, the key is that they scale appropriately and that they don't overscale. That's my opinion. I actually, I, I think that there was actually a Team Covenant episode about this podcast where they're talking about just the challenges and they're actually talking about board games but it's exceptionally challenging if you accelerate too fast or you don't grow fast enough i mean it's that sweet spot that's exceptionally challenging to find with any game so yeah yeah i agree i don't have anything to say about legions i i actually have products still to open i'm looking forward to playing the game because louis interest in it and then we know george's thoughts by his face George doesn't have thoughts on it. He hasn't ever considered it. George, anytime I bring up a new TCG with George, it's you the exact You thing. bring up 18 TCGs a <laughs> week. That's literally like what I do. This is what I'm I do. I'm not going to carry whatever you Googled this morning. I'm sorry. I don't George, you need to have a, you need to seem to buy one case from Louis on a rolling, rotating basis. And no. you can have a little, you can have one spot on your shelf. That's called Louis choice. I would rather die. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, Back to Magic the Gathering, our previously scheduled content. God. Huh. I didn't think they'd be in a lawsuit. <laughs> Who are they in lawsuit with? I guess it's not a lawsuit. The Alta, Who are they in Alta Fox legal? Thing. Oh, are they in all? No, they're not in a lawsuit. Louis is just literally <laughs> saying words. Louis just using the wrong terminology. Louis just using words. They're like, in conflict. <laughs> all right, a year ago. Did you? Uh, I, I, we think, actually I, thought I think Magic was going to flop. I was the most wrong about Magic. Yeah. We that's all were on the same team. That's saying something considering how wrong you were about everything else. I was, I was, I nailed MetaZoo. I was a little bit Nine off on 1K. Uh, that. I, after last on week's bad. episode, I'm not sure you really think that. What do you mean? N never mind. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <That's> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Magic's got their groove back. Uh, and like, hey, let me tell you, this is, this is, I don't even play biggest, Magic and I feel that this is the biggest wild card in the entire TCG space. Yes. Because all these other games are not Magic. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's Magic and not Magic. Yeah. That's what it feels like for sure. And, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I have to teach Fab, I have to teach MetaZoo. I don't have to teach magic. They all come in knowing magic. Yeah. So if a person comes in, I have to be like, oh no, I actually carry these better games. It's Legion. It, it's a lead, it's it's leading into better games. It's Legion. Legions. <laughs> Not no lead gen. It's two it's separate leader. words. You're, you're generating leads Continue to Georgia. other TCGs. I don't like nighttime, George. It's not, I, it's, 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 we're it's, an hour past my bedtime. It's awkward because I don't like morning Louie. Like, there's never a good time for us. No, Midday no, is really the story, peak. Story of wow. our relationship. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the so I never hear from George. Yeah. Um, I text him like at nine o'clock and he's like, I'm in bed. Yeah, like don't text me at I'm nine. Start crafting it up. Um I, it together. Magic's got it. They need to stop this nonsense with D D. They've got to stop. This new set has me terrified. 
I, have, I, I don't remember. Yeah, Somebody no, predicted you were 100% that. right. Well, I maybe. know I was. Is you? It's looking like you were 100% right. I about know I was. Is this, is this D&D D&D completely flop? Flop? Before, you, before you do it, George, I'm going to do it. If anyone's looking to buy Commander Legends, no, 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 no. <laughs> please send me a message. No. That's fine. You can buy it from Louie. I don't really care. Um, The thing you'll learn about carrying magic more is like the good part is it never like just hold it forever. It'll eventually go fine. Yeah, because you know, ca- cash flow. Is you no just gotta have enough capital to hold yeah. it forever. Cash flow and capital means nothing to me. I... <laughs> new TC. Yeah, new... Good. I... Mm. yeah Get good. same. So, um, right. I never, I didn't think magic would be such a freaking roller coaster this year. Magic has been a roller coaster. Don't yeah. forget, like magic's pumping right now, but we had three complete dead sets. Uh, no, yeah, one of no, those were D and D sets, right? No, one of they were <laughs> one was a D and D set. Was, one was of them was a D and D set. Vampire Buffy Slayer. God, Buffy Vampire they're so Slayer. bad at that. <laughs> yeah, that was so terrible. That was the worst. <laughs> I have so much of that. I have you know, so. You know, I have a great idea. Let's do a whole magic set at a wedding. <laughs> I have so much of that set. It doesn't uh, sell at all. But then Kamigawa was just. I mean, a banger. Crush it. I I don't think I've I have seen anything like Kamigawa was since probably Dominaria worse work. I actually had a guy in what my play there? group I I, I played tabletop up. games with and he was like, dude, have you seen the new Kamigawa set? He's like so good. I haven't yeah. played Magic in years and I came back in on that set. All right. My prediction for Magic is that they uh starting with bro- uh what's the next set? Is it Dominaria? That they no. No, so that was it. Double Masters is going to be amazing. Commander Legends Always. is a flop. Uh, Double Masters is going to be amazing. And Dominaria is going to have some sort of super, <clears throat> super rare chase yeah. card. And yeah. that, like, they've tested it in Kamigawa. Kamigawa, that, yeah. God, it is Dominaria next. Yeah. Dominaria is going to be a fire set. And my my key, my key set is Brothers War, is going to have the biggest chase that you've ever seen in my yeah, opinion that's my gut too like you're gonna have the artifacts it's gonna be something amazing um and it's gonna be really really good and that is i agree with you the biggest issue for any new tcg 100 percent agree with you magic Going the gathering, against magic magic the gathering has the power to like crush de- you destroy my channel <laughs> crush you let's go watch see i'm rooting for you baby well, um the good news is you have podcast, viewers that you yeah. give it right your podcast dies with this george wait what <laughs> your your podcast dies game with point Mike, yeah, you're my only hopes keep going baby <laughs> we need you wait who who makes legions he's my only hope <laughs> what about what about genesis what about assad assad is doing good we'll assad, get there. Assad, we'll get there. just keep trucking baby any other predictions oh, on magic um I- as somebody yes. who knows nothing about it, I know they're still crushing it. I think they're going to hit a rough spot. That's my hot take. I. Think what do you think they? You think next year they'll towards the end of next year they're going to flatten out? Yeah. Like they Magic they're, they're just slinging the hotness, like, and then they just get duds. Everybody like again like it is the it is like the beauty of this industry. It's <laughs> like when you're good, you're always good, and when you're bad, you're always bad, and that's never true. Like Ikoria was amazing. It was like, oh my god, they got it back. Oh my god, magic is going to take over the world. Then came Theros Beyond Death, yeah. and it made me want to not go to Beyond Death and just die. <laughs> um, like I remember getting a call from my general manager the day after release, being like, "Hey, um, uh, and I've never heard him nervous before." He's like, "Can you call um the other stores and see how they did?" I'm like. How did we do? <laughs> He's like, um, uh, it wasn't as good as we had hoped. I'm like, define that. He's like, we sold two collector boosters. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> two out of that many. Uh, uh, like, I don't, you don't like, have to answer. Five hundred and eighty. <laughs> oh my god, are you still holding them? Uh, yeah, no, now, cool. now everybody wants theirs beyond death. They're gone now. Everybody wanted them. They're gone. Yeah, Isn't that funny? Well, that's, that's how it happens for sure. Man, it's how with magic is. So, um, how like, what was the year difference? So, how long did you have to hold them until they actually were worth nine something? months? A year. Yeah, I mean, ma- like, and after it's after so a year for magic, magic, you're almost always back to you. It's very rare. It's, it's magic, very rare. Yeah. And so, I I think that like, there's no other marketplace like that. Mm-mm. Pokemon. 
Oh, you're yeah. right. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. I think Magic Other than those two. has no. a I think the the next year for Magic looks really weird because the question is do they can sit do they continue to go more and more direct to consumer via Amazon or do they pivot? They do have tournaments coming up, yeah. They've been pivoting. Like they've, they've been showing pivot. they've been showing Papa George some love lately. So I, I love Wizards for that. I don't know what that I don't even want to make a prediction on that because it doesn't matter what I say, I'll be criticized. If I say, if like, fine, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll, I'll show some. Don't people. care what people think about you, Louis. Speak to I, your heart, just I, don't read the comment section. This is easy. Go ahead. I think magic will get it. I think that they are going to. Oh, I, I knew you were going to show your favorite games. <laughs> I think that they're going to get That's it. What I got think that started. they're going to realize. I, I think Kamigawa was a pretty good. Um, if they can do things like Kamigawa and they can give stores, uh, yeah, you know, that was the first one where you could play at, at no, that was New Capenna. You could, the first time you could play the game was in the local game store. I think that's a big win. If they continue to make moves that way, I think they can be very successful. The yeah, problem is that I, means they're leaving, they're, they're leaving money on the table and that'll be the criticism of that. Uh, what? What do you mean? I mean, like, listen, they have instead of going direct to consumer, the price of collector That's boosters. That's true. Oh, like, I did forget. Everybody's raising prices on boosters because of. I mean, they're up, they're up like twenty five percent over two years. Collector so. boosters have become outrageous. Yeah. Like, outrageous! I now pay more than I used to charge. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, That's I, crazy. I, I the at every one to my customers in my uh, Discord. The thing that's crazy about Magic to me, if they deliver 100 sets and 51 of those are good sets, they'll survive. Oh, Magic. Right? Can survive. You see what I'm no. saying? Like, as long as the majority of the sets over a period of time are positive, if they just need an extra 1% on top of that, no. and I think they'll be fine. You bring up a good point. Let me add one caveat to this. Wallet fatigue has... M- somehow never affected magic. They would do a new set every six weeks and they keep raising the prices. Like the new Warhammer 40k uh decks, yeah. the co- like the like the good ones are like five hundred dollars. Yeah. For four decks. Yeah. Wow. And like wallet fatigue has never hit magic. If we go into a R word um recession. <gasps> um I wonder if we will remain as price insensitive to magic as we have been over the last couple of years. For sure. Where you, you weren't a store in 2008. Uh-huh. Hmm. It's so different than 2008. Not, not the recession, the, the product magic. The gathering had one product back then. Right. The right. Yeah. Product. The booster box. And They've maybe, diversified a lot. Maybe some like, you know, maybe like event decks, right? Now they have 15 different booster boxes and commander decks and like uh, have a lot of skews. That's going to be the issue. Like that's going to be the issue. You're going to see if we hit the R word, hit the recession, you're going to see a lot of stores shut down. That's the issue. Like, all right, re- re- ready for my spoiler. If you don't hit the R word, <laughs> you're going to see a lot of stores shut down too. Yeah. All right. This is getting depressing. Let's talk about Pokemon. On one K. What? <laughs> Let's talk about Pokemon. Something we can all be well, well, like, depressing. Pokemon's just tried and true. I don't know what we're going to talk about with Pokemon. It, we, it's exactly where I thought it was going to be a year from now, a year ago. And it'll be exactly where we what expect it to be a year, year from, from now. Today? Oh, exactly the same as it looks today. So Pokemon's probably I have the safest <laughs> out of all of them. A year ago, I did not think that oh. all I would think about is no. Pokemon. No, no. God, you did already you think about you Pokemon? Legions. You've, gotten, you've gotten your plug. That's enough. You got no, to plug your little bundle. You're but done. on cavitiesmarket.com, we have a wide array of Pokemon boxes. Uh, my point That's is... That's true. You get no Pokemon boxes. <laughs> 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 you got to call Tyler and ask him for boxes. My point is that I am, like, I have completely fallen in love with Pokemon again, and I never would have that com- seen that coming. My kid... What, what about have, it? This is why I have so much faith in Pokemon. Because my kid, every time she sees a Pokemon, she wants Pokemon cards and she wants to open packs. Daddy, can I oh open gosh. packs? I got a Yo, shiny yeah. one. 
Like, like she yes. Is- it's the same time. Anytime Thea comes in the office, she looks at what are the jumbo packs that they did for the anniversary? Yeah. Anniversary. Yeah. She's like, can I open one? Because they're like super accessible. Yeah. I'm like, no, honey, I got to sell those. You know. I uh, I did I not anticipate up. that I would be so all in on Pokemon. Um, I'm all in on Pokemon. I did not anticipate that. And I think, like, for me, it, it'll be really fun to watch. I'm really excited to watch her grow up through that and to see how this IP has stood the test of time in a deep, deep way. Um, it's just, yeah, but I agree. Like, it'll be all- the same place next year. It'll still be pumping. Like, yeah. Out of all the product I have, Pokemon always sells the most consistently. And I think always. we've all been in agreement with that. Always. It's super it's consistent. It is at my local store. It's super predictable. Like, it is the game I get traded in the, in the highest volume. Magic's more because there's more players there that, you know, whatever. The highest volume, though, like people come in with stacks of cards to trade in. And I can't keep it in stock on TCG player. Like I can hardly keep a, sh- I can hardly have a display case of Pokemon because the cards sell so fast on TCG player. It's crazy. George, are you drinking like three different drinks simultaneously right now? Yeah, you had like a coffee, a soda, and now a can drink. You got my water and I got my uh, soda pop. Okay. My Anything goodness. else? You guys and your coffee. I had my second no. cup of coffee. It's late. It's like midnight. George, anything else for po- it's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 30. <laughs> 10 15. <It's> 10, 20. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know what time it is because we just said five different times. Uh, it's 10 18. Next game. Cryptic. Oh, I have nothing to say. That? Hold on. <laughs> Wait, where are they at? What? Open C. George's George's NFT. Gosh, we're gonna get so much NFT hate this week in the comment section. You just can't stop right. talking about NFTs. Uh, They'll give us more hate for talking over each other. So I, that'll be fine. Keep hating. All right, we're giving the comment section. Oh no, our temper's not. Our temper's not on the top ten. Did your stupid goblins kick him off? Stop, cryptic. Uh, I'm super excited about the future of Cryptic. There's not much to talk about in the past. I did not know that Cryptic was going to be a game a year ago and never could have predicted that. I don't know why we added these games that nobody knew that nobody knows about and didn't exist a year ago. People know was about because Louis has them on his channel and he wants to get clicks. Oh, that's good. I wanted to ahead, have an open dialogue. George, tell me why you think Cryptic's going to fail this year. I don't think it will fail this year. Where do you think it's going to be in a year? I have no clue. Now they're doing you. Make a prediction. What I what do you like about it. cryptic? Oh, oh, I lied. I lied. I have a, I have a thought on cryptic. I want to give them a shout out. They went right to Southern Hobby for their distribution needs. And if you're gonna instead pick, of another one, if you're gonna pick a distributor, Southern Hobby is as good as it gets. So good job to Tanner. Yep. Uh, well, for picking Southern Hobby, uh, my rep. Oh, I guess I got I got some cues. I got some cues. I got Bingo. some cues. I was just gonna say this. My rep said that he they're adding four or five new games, and he was like mm-hmm. the one that impressed him the most it's was the only one my rep told me about was cryptic. Yeah, I mean, like, there's another one that um, he did not speak very favorably of. That we don't cover it on this channel, uh, and it, I don't think we will in the future because. I think they're going to get dropped. Uh, like, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, but like, my rep was very, very, very pro cryptic. He said that their presentation for cryptic had their poop together, and like, yeah. they were raring to go. Yeah, nice. I like their advertisement on Facebook. I'm gonna. I will. I'm actually gonna take cryptic. I will carry cryptic. Bing. Yes, I got one. I like it. Uh, so cryptic for me, like it's seeing, all because of my rep. You know that, right? No, it's not. I have talked to you about like, cryptic. Yeah, and notice I didn't carry until my rep talked to me about it. Yeah, the, I laid. You know, well, I, it, I, was I, a, it was a it was an and both scenario. Else, I dropped the seed. Somebody else watered it, and somebody else gets the Thank seed. Thank you, bro. It's that's how evangelism maybe. works. How, how will you feel when I get better allocation <laughs> on cryptic than you do? Uh, Tanner will give me boxes. I'm not what about Tanner? <laughs> Uh, I have seen over the last three weeks the cryptic community really, really start to grow. Uh, it's been what really are you really most cool. excited about it? I so for me, one of the things I'm most excited about is the way he is doing new release boxes. So instead of it being just the Kickstarter and then it's first edition or second edition or whatever, he's not doing that. It's 
Kickstarter is wave one and it's called Kickstarter. And the next box that we can get from distribution, the first box we can get from distribution is wave two, but it has different chase cards in it. It's not just like a complete lazy reskin in a, you know, like a next edition or like you know, whatever. It's not just like the same exact cards. It's they have put creativity into all the waves and he actually They're making has, each set unique. Yeah. Or each, not, each wave of a set. And he's being very concerned. He's concerning the print volume too. He's doing very short waves, very small numbers of waves, but wave two will have a chase. Wave three will have a different chase and it'll still be mm. very, you know, tight, tightly. So he's evolved this idea of managing your print runs to managing your print runs to meet supply and demand. But also he has worked really, really hard on building a relationship with a printer and scheduled printer time in a way that allows him to change the boxes nice. and move things forward. Very, very smart, nice, nice. very, very, you know, creative, creative. And uh, I think that the gameplay is also super fun and it's very, very easy to learn for somebody who has played Matt, like George is saying, like, Anybody who plays magic can walk in and play the game. Cryptic is different enough. For, like it's a unique, you don't have life points. You attack, you know, it's like you, you, you attack a certain card that's on the, on the battlefield, but the way that it's play, you know, you don't have land cards. You don't, you don't have a lot of the things, the way that it's designed feels a lot like magic, the gathering, which gives nice. it another huge leg up. And last thing I'll say is that he is giving, he's already given 250 stores free product to you know to teach that yeah he didn't give you anything Tanner. um but he, you don't he probably need it. Out you, to you. You, it. Don't, you don't check your store email george you don't tyler check that's on you buddy if you're listening to this tyler that's on you now buddy tell him uh, i say hi but is this tyler s that you're talking about yeah tyler no, works at george's is, anyway. i didn't know that okay so, go ahead la last thing he so if you have a problem with compete sport message tyler not george george don't care no more go ahead he has a, <laughs> he has a massive <laughs> he has a massive op kit planned to to send out to you know nice i, I don't remember the exact number my god i i, I don't want to quote it i'm just gonna I say so it sounds like they're targeting a stories thousand, a thousand lgs's that he's really trying to get into so wait so that'd be insane to 1k I think they, is, that, is that what you just said? I'm extremely excited about cryptic. All extremely right. excited about it. Cool. All right. Send me a kit. I'll I don't get to it when I get to it. <laughs> Tanner, send me a kit. Well, you'll have a you'll have a Louis kit with maybe a you know oh special God. promo in it, right? If you, if you if you're in this game, I'm not carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out now we know why he's not carrying legions. <laughs> I will not carry a game that you're in. I will not do it to my Sorcery. Customer. Let's talk about sorcery. George is in oh, a great down. George is the only George, wait. Being, George is the only human being in the world that doesn't believe in sorcery. It's hilarious. Why? He the you know the, did you read Rudy's message this week where he was like I'm not doing a video until uh until sorcery actually delivers on their preach computer. Rudy preach. George is like the only person huge... who's like yeah they're not going to they're not going to deliver on their wait, wait, wait. not the what worst. I said. Wait a minute. That is not at all what I said. <laughs> I think they will deliver your product. It's I just think to win your product. I that is not a fear I have. It's but, a lot of product to deliver, though. No, it's not. It's less boxes than Alpha than Fab Alpha. I understand. That's still a lot of boxes to go from zero to hero in months' time. I I mean I don't know if they'll deliver on time. That means nothing to me. I never <laughs> never once have I ordered. Yeah, a that's that's a Kickstarter. Never once have I ordered a Kickstarter and gotten an on Actually, time. Actually, never happened. You know who who has done that? Um, Chip Theory Games. They have a great tabletop game. But Cryptic is going to do it. <laughs> anyway, sorcery. Uh, I'm genuinely George, excited about I sorcery. I just want to play it. George, where do you think sorcery is in one year? Do you think it exists? Yeah, it'll okay. exist in a year. What does it look like? Way smaller than everybody on the internet's thinking right now. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, it's gonna be way like, tiny. This idea that it's gonna be the next thing, I guess I don't buy it. I don't. No, buy it. I, I think it hits a different I, string though like, that other games don't. It will not be. It will not be bigger than Fab. It will not be bigger sure. than MetaZoo. It will not be bigger than Genesis. I don't think. I I don't think it will cross that lexicon. It felt. It it felt like to me like uh, like an LCG. In terms yeah, of scale, like, like you know why they don't work? Because that's, like, that's not, living well, cards don't work. 
it's not that. It's just that I've I've loved LCGs. I love that. I love that model as a consumer. I don't yeah. love it as a store. Consumers love living card games. They yes, all die because stores won't carry them. Well, they all die because it's not a financially viable model for stores. Yeah, okay. that's why stores won't carry them. Sure, but that being said, what if they just do a direct to consumer model for their entire life cycle? Like that you know, that's I, I don't. I, I understand. It, it is a. I don't think it's going to be some massive game. I don't think that's ever been my perspective. But I do think that there will be a a cult following, a small yeah. community of people that are heavily vested in the game. They definitely have a cult following. I will say that. Yeah. I, I'm curious how out of all that money they raised, how many people were f- flippers or people oh, that and we have reached where I think they're gonna hit the bump in the road. Like when people get their kit, 60% of these kits are gonna be for sale on day one. Sure. In the price I, they're already on crater. sale. Yeah, and the price is gonna crater. That's fine for me. I don't think that matters. I, I'm in the same that boat actually. I'm matters. fine with I'm that, fine with losing money on it. Listen, I think one of the things I'm learning about the TCG industry, and if you look back at Pokemon, they printed less boxes as the sets moved forward. That like the the way that it worked is like the game had all this hype, and then the hype died off, and they had to control the, what they did. This is where I talk about scaling. It can't always be okay. We have X boxes, and next month we're going to do X times five, and then times ten. Like right, they, like they they scaled it back. And if you if you remember, Pokemon had you know, for a long time, there were Pokemon boxes sitting, you know, um, base set boxes mm. sitting in stores or whatever. So I don't, I, I think for sorcery, the key is, can they do some form of marketing and growing of their game? Or is it just going to be one release a year that the only time you're ever thinking about sorcery is that release? But I will remind you that that works for board games. I, I actually see it more as a tabletop game or yeah. a board game, less as an actual TCG. I now the question is if they're going to go into distribution and work with stores, that's a whole nother world. But if they do a Kickstarter every year, or if they, which I think they're not going to do, but if they do a direct they release could. every year, you could still have a community of people who really love the game. There's a yeah. community of people who absolutely love Scythe or Scythe or whatever the game's called by Stonemeyer Games. That can be all the components. Yeah. I have I, part of that community. Big community. box. Yeah. Like they have all the stuff, everything the company puts out, they buy, they love it. It's amazing. And a game like Sorcery can fit into that that category. Same thing with terraforming Mars. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like that that can be a world. It's on. I'm not saying it's the next flesh and blood. I'm not saying it's the next MetaZoo. I'm not saying it's the next Magic the Gathering. I'm saying that they can bring that world into the TCG space. Um, sure. And I believe that. And that world already has expensive products. You have first edition board games that are worth tons of money. Now you can have booster boxes that get opened and devalued when they're open. And now you have like that, that collector's market. I think if you look at it like a boomer, like George is all going to be bad. But if you think outside the box, George only knows about the box. George knows the boxes. He just took a drink to prevent himself from laughing. (laughs) (laughs) I almost got him, dude. I almost got him to break. All right. (laughs) Next game. Do we have any more games? Yeah, we we have more more. games. The greatest game on history. George. My favorite, my favorite storyline of the past year (laughs) by a mile. Yes, me too. Where did, George, is anything different in this world for, of Genesis than you thought it would be in last year? Oh, okay. Their beef with MetaZoo, <laughs> their Twitter fight with MetaZoo is the storyline I did not know I needed in my life. <laughs> if like you like George, trial. what two games will never openly beef? I'm not sure I wouldn't I have said would have Genesis said and MetaZoo. Yeah. I'm not sure it's fair to put this in the Genesis side of this, though. <laughs> Don't care. Loving the beef. Love the beef. Give me a side. Any publicity of is good. Any, any publicity is good. Publicity kind of thing. It is amazing. The oh, Twitter beef. God. Yeah, it was. So I good. love that Metasuit and Genesis are beefing. I hope it continues all of next year. Yeah, it's great. It's it really is good. The funniest beef I've ever seen. 
because like I'm sure Assad is like sad about it because Assad's like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. He is the. Ni- I think that is a fair statement. He is the nicest guy in the world. Uh, uh, so Genesis is uh, where I thought they were going to be this year. Like they finished a very successful Kickstarter. Yep. Uh, they're growing. They're growing at the pace Genesis grows and should grow at. This is yes. what I'm talking about. This is exactly yes. what I'm talking about. Scaling. I hate it when you disagree with me and then you restate the exact point that I make later and make I yourself. I didn't agree with you. I just you was bored. Um, Genesis is growing at the exact right pace for Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. They're not. They're not looking to be massive tomorrow. This they're is looking their to year. scale slow and low. This is their year. Yeah. Origins has to be amazing, and it will be. Yeah. I have full confidence in that. Full confidence. 100%. They play test a lot. They do. I know that because some of the team kitchen or the some of the kitchen table TCG people are working with them. They listen. Oh, is that, that ben? They have the most loyal TCG community I've by, ever by seen. a mile. By I've a ever mile. Seen. Ever seen. And it's because Assad is always there. He's yes. always the there. Assad never sleeps. He's always in every Discord, always <laughs> yeah. asking who wants to play games. And he's always super humble and super like, how can I make it better? It's amazing. Literally the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Um, I did not anticipate that they would come out with fifty thousand dollars worth of prize support this year. I thought that yeah, was now one of them is hosting a event at their store for their qualifiers. Oh, that's, awesome. that's really cool. Good job, George. You want to pat on your back? Turn around, pat you on your back. I've had qualifiers for Fab, MetaZoo, Genesis, and Student Cryptic. Right, Tanner? Go ahead. Cool story. Um, so I didn't anticipate that happening, and uh, I think that's super, super good. So Kickstarter was better than I thought it was going to be as well. Um, I think you know the yeah, Kickstarter did well. Super, super successful. And um, yeah. Over the next couple of years, I think you will continue to see Genesis be the turtle and, and just trucking along and growing yeah. at a steady, steady pace, steady pace, sustainable, and, and doing the things it needs to do to scale up. Like you know, hiring hiring Joey to do a lot of the marketing and do a lot of that development work. Like hiring the people that he he needs to hire in order to do the work that needs to be done to continue to grow. Genesis yeah. will be here in five years. I'd say have... no game if if we hit if we don't hit the R and we hit the D. Yeah. Impression. If we really crater, no game is better suited for that than Genesis. I agree. Yep. Because they're tiny. Yep. Are you saying we're gonna hit the D word? I'm saying, like, listen. Let's not bum everybody out. I don't want to talk about this. Um, I don't want to talk about this. This gets into politics. We don't discuss politics on this podcast. I only I talk about talk goblins, chimpers. <laughs> NFTs are okay. But not <laughs> <laughs> My chimpers are not doing so good. I just look. So many downvotes. Okay. I can't it's even okay. see we the don't number. See I don't care. We Download don't all you it want. Anymore. Only, only Louie gets to see it and feel the depression later. I don't later. care if you I don't care if he sees them or not. Everybody give this a big old thumbs down for me. Wait, does it give the algorithm? Th- thumbs down for actually, George. Yeah, it works for the algorithm. So it's what it is. Oh, you can right, give a thumbs down. You can give care. a thumbs down for Mitch leaving. That's right. fine. Yeah, thumbs down will for you Mitch. Tell leaving. us how much. Will you update us on how many thumbs down we get, Louie? Yeah. Yeah. Can all. you do like a, like a weekly update? I just assume they're all directed towards you, Mitch. Um, That's probably right. true. All in all, no, towards George. Uh, all in all, I want to. Uh, we'll end this. It's an hour and twenty minutes. Oh my god! All right, then end it. Go ahead. I just want to thank everybody for watching the podcast oh for years. Oh my god! Oh, listen, I you're so pr- like just be how many thankful. people have watched your podcast in the last? Did you look? One K. No. That'd be cool to see that. I'd be curious how many views you had over the last year. Do that. I mean, I can do that on the the. List you just have it. to. You just have to individually. I'm not. You have to do, you have put a little bit of effort, Louis. You have to do yeah, math. Hard for you. If somebody wants to do the math and add up all the views, we will give you a free T-shirt. Uh, from we'll give you a free George T-shirt. All right, Tyler, do it. So you get a free T-shirt. That's your new uniform at the store. We have eight eight thousand <laughs> listens on the podcast. Wait, that can't be. Yeah, that's on like average. that's on Apple Podcasts. Oh, that's, that's, that's on all the podcasts. We have an average of two hundred plays per episode. 
That's not on YouTube. That's on stuff nobody listens to. Though. On the podcast version of this. That was the point. We we hear you. I only want to know about our YouTube, but it's fine. I can't do that. There's not a button to hit. Oh it requires God. work. I can't even ran the button to none of them work. You can get us. You can go <laughs> open a Google sheet and you can enter numbers and then yeah. you can hit equal sum. Yeah. Sell, do this on your anniversary. <laughs> I got I got things to do in my life. Apparently. All right. Everyone. Apparently not. That's apparently a lie. <laughs> Thank you. That's for said apparently. Oh my god. Thank oh, you all for listening to my podcast. It's so nice of you all to do that. It, it's worth every penny you I'm paid not for worthy. it. Um everybody say goodbye to Mick. Bye Mick. We'll see you oh my gosh. maybe in a this few months. This is my least favorite George. This is my least favorite I, George. It's like midnight. I'm tired. I love you guys. Mitch, we love you, buddy. We're we're glad that we are still friends outside of the podcast. Yeah. George, whenever you message me, I'll I'll be grateful. Hold on, I'm ready for watch right talk now. when you're ready. Mitch, I sent you, you. I si- go anything ahead. You want to say to the people to close it out? Uh, may the zoo be with you. I just texted you, Mitch. May the zoo be with you. And also and with also you. With I texted you. Mitch. I'm tired. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>